The following is a fictitious episode in the lives of two make-believe hobos. The characters and events you hear are not real. Don't freak out. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're having fast fun, my friend and I. Sitting in a new room that we've never been in before. It's in the basement of the free clinic. We've delivered blood here, but never been invited in it to stay. Now we are, and that's the way it's gonna stay. Greg and I here talking content today. Yeah. Yeah. Eat it. Mm. Eat it all up. Snakes are tasty. That's better. That's better, yeah. huh? Yeah, I feel better. You know, I gotta get this heart monitor. Just... Can you pull that up? Ooh, ooh, you're squirting now, though. You're so, I don't think. Yee. Oh, you're writing your name on the wall Greg. with the blood. Greg. Oh, that e doesn't look good. It's no, it's dripping. Blob. Well, it's so much is coming out oh. quickly. Yeah, here, wrap it up. Wrap. Let's just let's get that blood monitor back on there. <sighs> Cause that I didn't realize that was stuck in you. I thought it was just kind of like uh, well, strapped Freak, to it. Freak was getting real mad at me that I wasn't, you know, letting him do all these tests uh -huh. on me. Was it the one with like the playing cards? And he like, you know, he he asks you which. No, it was more like there were a bunch of needles, and he kept putting them in my arms. Then Ooh. he kept putting them in my legs. And then he kept slapping me to see if I could feel things. And then he started slapping me really hard, but I couldn't really feel anything. But I could hear like the slaps were getting louder and louder and louder and louder. Oh, gosh. That doesn't sound pleasant at all. But I guess I'm fine now. You seem fine. You yeah. seem normal, except for all the wrappings around you and the fact that you're kind of taped to that chair. Yeah. Um, I think Freak mainly did this so I you know, wouldn't get up. Yeah, but... or hurt yourself. I know he was worried about you there. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Hi. It's the Boxcar Buddies. Uh, for those who, who watched or listened to last episode, I almost drowned. Yeah, Greg yeah. almost did. Yeah. Because the hand, drown. the metal hand is always really, really hard it's for Greg to swim with. Heavy. Yeah. It's it, too. I made it with two dense of materials. I need to full metal alchemist this shit. Yeah. Get a lighter metal. Maybe aluminum. Some aluminum for you. Yeah, but it always falls apart so easily. Yeah. You got to figure out a way to line it. The original prototype was aluminum. And remember when we shook hands? As soon as you grabbed it, just crunched it. Yeah. Crunched it. You, I know. You made it look like a swan after, you know, a fancy dinner at like, I, a French <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> right. Here you go. A goose. Mais yeah. Oui. Yeah. But no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't mean to, I didn't realize what was going on. I didn't know it was made of aluminum. So it was totally like squeezing, you know, a tin can when you're done with it. It was just. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, that prototype was no good. But uh, Greg fashioned himself a new one uh, full of denser materials uh, for anyone who doesn't too know. Too dense of materials. There's too many things that's going on in this hand. It's got a it's got a hook shot. It's got laser pepper, gun, lasers, spice mixes, yeah, TV, mm -hmm. internet, Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and I recently serrated the blades on my knuckles, so now I can punch and stab Whoa. at the same time. It's like Wolverine, yeah, dude, it's dope. <clears throat> That's very cool. It's like I have knives for hands. It is. Yeah, so uh, anyone who doesn't know, Greg has one hand, which is metal, which he made for himself after uh, both of his arms were ripped off in a, in a rebellious act uh, from his creation, a former sex robot, um, soon to yeah, be. Yeah, just, you know, let's keep, soon let's to be keep partner reminiscing of, about my horrible, horrible creation that did this to me. Soon to be a part life partner of Gollum, uh, royalty-free Gollum. Soon to be crumpled up in between... My thigh and my hand, because I don't have another arm right now. Right, right. But in any case, I'm alive thanks to a couple geese that found me. They just kind of saw me and saw that I was, you know, like breadcrumbs were flying out of my shirt. And they oh. just kind of kept pecking and pecking and pecking. And they pulled me ashore. And thankfully, Freak was around. He was uh, just chilling outside at the mm -hmm. air and water show. Found me. He hobbled me back to his free clinic. And then... Uh, I've been uh, I've been recovering since recouping. Yeah, mm. Greg Greg's been here since. I, I feel uh, since way then. I feel way better, but he's not letting me get out. 
No, he wants to. He wants to keep you here. I think that was that's been. You know, he's wanted that for some time. He kept talking about doing tests on you and talking about measuring your paranormal activity and and all that stuff. So what does he think that I'm some kind of like like flypaper for ghosts? Maybe. Maybe that's exactly what he. He thinks. does say that death follows me a lot. Also, I mean, it would certainly explain why he hangs out. Around really around you. I was gonna say around us, what? but he really does hang out around you. What what other reason than being a good friend would you not want to hang out with me? Um, I mean, I, I hang out with you all the time mainly because of the like I feel like we have a better chance of getting food and uh accomplishing anything as See? two rather See? than one, certainly. There is so much use to me as to having a friend. But Freak only sees me as, no, he's a, he's a magnet for ghosts. Yeah. Well, you know how he is. He's very uh, self-centered. He's very, he's a bit egotistical. And yeah. he sees things in the value. The thing he cares about is his free clinic uh-huh. and his paranormal at investigations right and his hospital staff right and ushering spirits from you know this plane to the next and i exactly it's all he just thinks about himself really so it's um, it's selfish behavior and now look at me i look like a mummy yeah yeah you're very wrapped up and and strapped to the chair as we mentioned but uh anyway uh greg and i what we normally do is we like to meet in a boxcar but because greg's been recuperating here in the basement of the free clinic for the last week or so i decided to come meet him greg's uh asked freak for the last few days if i could come freak finally Finally relented, provided that yeah, Greg would be strapped to the chair. Finally opened the door to this damn place. Jesus. I know. I literally, myself, and there was a huge line of people out there who were looking to get into the free clinic for various reasons. Uh, a lot of them more urgent than myself. But uh, we all got some methadone when we got in anyway, which was nice. Complimentary and, um, at the front door. Absolutely. Uh, as they well, come in the little paper cups. Yes, as well like as. It's, it's like Costco. You get a little free sample. Uh huh. As well as like, uh, you know, little uh, Dixie cups of water and uh, three pretzels three of those um gotta keep the carbs up the gold's pretzels yes yeah. uh so those so it was it was very nice all around now i am definitely mellow uh i'm feeling pretty good and now i made my way to the basement here where greg's been hanging out so that uh so that him and i could talk about um some various content that uh that him and i have consumed which is what we like to talk about from week to week as two homeless bros hanging in chicago we look to escape our current situations on a daily basis, and to do so, we escape into music and video games and movies and TV and streaming and anything we can to uh, to escape it. So yeah, that's the fun that we've got. Any kind of distraction is great, because right now, man... Um, Can't even move. Do you re- I don't remember a day where I haven't had a catheter inside me. Oof. You know, let me ask you something about the catheter. Don't, do you feel, yeah, see you're peeing right now. And that's, that is exactly what I was going to ask you about is that, do you find that to be nice? Uh, Don't you find that to be nice? It's a blessing and a curse. Because you always have to be aware of it. I can pee anytime I want, Uh huh. but I got this tube that's just like coiled around my leg. Uh huh. Like a boa constrictor. And it's like everyone else can, even though you're, even though you're not physically doing anything to pee like the pee just comes out of you it's like we're all watching you pee because i see the pee run down the tube i'm okay with that yeah yeah well i suppo- I mean honestly i'm used to it we you're right you and i both we've peed outside many times and as dudes i mean in the urinals like you know you ever go to those urinals in like wrigley field or whatever Have you ever gone to a giant- urinal and stared at someone while they went um i have to assert dominance to, to assert dominance yeah in the in the to know that i'm the, the bathroom, bathroom king Oh, I'm the I'm the king of the stall. So you stare. I have many nicknames. You stare at guys while they're using the urinal to pee. Oh, I start peeing, and then I look at them, and then I purposely start peeing really hard. Oh, so oh, so they can hear it reverb against the back wall I want of the them urinal. To hear the fire hose. Yeah, the pressure. Yeah, like exactly. The, the, like the mean piss. Right, right. But your face gets really red when you do that. It's like I always worry that you're going to pop a blood vessel because you're just you know really forcing it out of there. But I understand the reasoning now, and it's because you want to. Assert I want. Dominance. I want them to know that I am king around here. You know, I do that sometimes in elevators. Um, 
I haven't peed in them yet against the back wall. I suppose if it ever but you got... hold your breath and you stare at someone as your face gets real red. Yes, and it I, works, doesn't and I, it? And I face away from the door of the elevator. Yeah. That's the key. It works. I turn right around, and it's like they're on their phone for a minute. But you know, they see my feet turn. Like when they're looking at their phone, they can see the movement, and, and then they can it's also like, see all the the veins starting to pop into your neck. In the neck, yeah. That's where it really. That's that's first where I'm like, and it's just and also above the right eye. Mm-hmm. And then as soon. Mm. And you just starts to sh- your head shakes really fast from side to side. Yeah, stare yeah, a little bit because there's so much pressure going yeah, on. A little bit of ringing your in your ears. Your start popping up. Mm-hmm. Your your neck collar pops out. Right, like yeah. a cobra. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Totally worth it though for the joke. It's uh, it's really funny to see him uh, squirm uncomfortably out of the elevator earlier than they wanted to. Yeah, but I, I like to block them to make sure that they can't leave. The oh yeah, bar the bar the exit. Yeah, just stand in front of the doorway. So like, just uh, just take a stretch. Yeah, keep you, stepping the way that they're trying to step around you. Huh? Or stretch your arms out like Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just look like you're waiting for a big hug before you let them Yeah, leave. but you're really red and angry looking. Yes. You're like a big Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Except no shouting about frog legs and gays. Yeah, that's true. But which, I mean, or, or I, that's chemicals. your thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe you could add that in if you want to, if that's part of the prank, I suppose. We're saying that tragedies are... Crisis yeah, actors. yeah, yeah. Blame it on the parents, you know, of, of kids. I mean, could, I blame you know, things on parents all the time. Sure, sure. A lot, a lot of kids do. A lot of kids blame, the, you know, their parents. I still blame my parents. It's, it's a very good go-to. It's a good go-to response. Being late. Oh, that's classic for me. It was my dad's fault. Yeah. My dad once again locked me in the RV. Oh. And made me drink 17... Liters of cola? Ma- no, uh, lava lamps. Oh, yeah. That's right. You said your dad used to do that. Why, what was the deal with him and lava lamps? He thought they were tasty. Oh, did you I ever could, tell him? Get them cheap. So did he drink them with you, or like was he forcing you? Well, to drink he would them? he would drink them, but then like when I got home from like my my like high school job, uh-huh. he'd be like, "You worked a hard day, son. You've earned yourself a drink." And, and he just popped the top off of it top and hand of a, you a lava, a lava lamp. lamp. That's nice. Had, you know what? You have to learn. You have to learn to like the taste. Yeah. But after a few lava lamps, you know, you you realize you might start getting into it. Everything starts to taste the same. And then you start experimenting the with, you know, like harder kinds of lava lamps. Whoa, really? Yeah. It's start to go down a slippery slope. Like an slope. LPA. Oh, <laughs> an LPA. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What is it? a pale a, a lava pale? Yeah. Pale, uh, a pale, pale? lava. <laughs> PLA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, your dad's had a fun bonding activity. At least you and your dad had something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no. Until, I, uh, the, until the life debt. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Now he's drinking his own lava lamps. Until you do something about Gollum, yeah, he I guess. won't let me back into the RV. Well, I wonder if he got a wedding invite. Do you think he did? Probably not. Okay. I mean, I was trying to feed Gollum to him. So... A save the date, even? You know what I mean? Like, just... I guess that is, right? I mean, if... If he would give me a call, I could probably find out. But mm. right now, the life debt is kind of like it takes precedence over everything. Yeah, life debt you. is all it's it's an honor system in the family. All consuming. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of all consuming, what did we consume this week, Don? Well, because we've done a few things together. We have, we have. Thankfully, um, another time. Uh, I will. Th- the last time, just before this, that I was allowed down into the basement, um, I was. I did so under the guise of bringing Greg some comics and some snacks that I knew that would help his recovery, and Freak uh, did relent. He acquiesced to let me in here for like 20 minutes tops. I ended up staying for about six or so hours, but uh, that was only because things got really busy. I lit a few firecrackers outside. Totally worth it. I don't regret it. We just kept playing Distraction, and and Freak just did not notice. No, it was Visiting hours passed. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning until he finally went, get out. Yeah, it was exactly what I hoped for. It was even better than I I was hoping for. But uh, while uh, we were doing this, so I did bring in the comics, and we, Greg and I talked a little bit, and then after a while, uh, Greg... Uh, had the idea to maybe watch some Netflix, yeah. which he just got working on his handphone. And so we were just like, you know what? Huddled, huddled, huddled on the bed, just with my hand in the middle of us. Yeah, just, you know, just like we like we do. We've huddled for warmth before down here in what I'm sure was a meat freezer at some point, but is now converted into, a, you know, basement of a free clinic. But uh, anyway. I like to say it, it's my own little bachelor pad. I mean, it's got my name on the wall. Yes, it does. Well, it, it did have my name on the wall. It's still intelligible it's just really dripping the f- it's like font it's halloween font now it's uh you know which is good because falls around the corner we're not far from it now oh. it's uh some people call this time spooktember actually 
Mm. So it's, uh, it's a fun, even pre-Halloween area where you can already start to get into that spirit, which I like to do. But what else I like to do is uh, watch Netflix with my buddy Greg. And with on me. Netflix, what we watched was a recently released Netflix original show, Disenchantment. <gasps> Yes, wow! From uh, the mind behind Simpsons and Futurama, Matt the Groening. Matt Groening, Groening, the Matt Groening, yeah, Groin itch, Matt Groin itch. I have one of those right now. You usually do, and I'm not going to scratch it for you. I don't care I that you're so strapped many in the chair. Band-aids. I don't care that you're strapped in the chair. <laughs> Any better? Mm, a little bit. Okay. Here, use this. Uh, use this. Um, uh, yeah. IV as a whip. Try and whip it. Whip it scratch. Whip scratch. It. Ow. 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 Ouch. Does that help at all? No. Okay. All right. We'll keep trying. Uh, anyway, Disenchantment. It is. Uh, they released eight episodes. Um, there was a lot of hype for this show before its release. Understandably Everyone's so. Everyone's like it's the new Matt Grading show. It's the next Futurama. Understandably so. F- obviously, Simpsons and Futurama have huge followings. Both shows very successful. Especially with the, the reveal of the cast. You had, like, the, yes. the big main player was Eric Andre, but also got, like, Abby Jacobson. Who did a good job? Uh, Nat Faxon. And then it's got the usual suspects of um Of a Matt, Matt Grona, yes. So you got, like, John DiMaggio and Tress McNeil. Mm-hmm. Um, got David Herman and Maurice LaMarche, Billy West, yes, like the usual suspects, right? And then you also got like a like some other like a cameo smattering, yep, yeah, yep. like all over the place. Um, but man, I I gotta say, Don, this show was kind of disappointing, pretty weak overall. Uh, Greg and I kind of felt the same way when we were done with it. What they did was they said they were going to release the season all at once, and then like any Netflix show, yes, exactly. And then just a little ahead of the release, they announced that actually they'd be splitting season one in half, and they release eight episodes up front, and then in a few months we can expect the other eight episodes of season one. So what we've seen so far is eight episodes, and I guess that's they're half. Kind, they're of kind the first of doing season. it like the Voltron thing. Thing, which yeah. I think is what's been helping Voltron stay relevant. Which, by the way, watch Voltron. Oh yeah, I love the new Voltron. Ooh, I haven't seen it. It's very good. Cool. It's very good. Okay. That's that is a recommendation. Okay. But we're talking about Disenchantment. Yeah, which is uh, we're gonna go ahead and say it, not a recommendation. It's, it's I anything. yeah, it's not a recommendation, dude. Uh, all right, so this this is the thing that bothered me the most. So our our three main characters, you got Bean, you got Lucy, and you got Elfo. Right. Bean, uh, who is the princess of this fictional kingdom, and she is a rebellious, sort of uh, angsty teenage type who loves to drink, and she's voiced by Amy Jacobson, right? Yes. And she does... I, I, I thought she no, did Abby a, Jacobson. Abby Jacobson. Yes, Amy Jacobson, somebody else. Uh, but yeah, Ab- Abby Jacobson did a good job. I thought Bean was a, a, a very... You could relate on, on many levels, and you could kind of buy into her as that voice. It she's was, also very much the Leela of the group. Absolutely. She she meets... She's like Leela meets, you know... Um, are, are, like our three main characters feel like they're just like not as good versions of Bender, Fry, and Leela. Yes, exactly. Which is a shame because you would you would think, uh, the, like I was saying, the, the thing that bothered the most with me is in the first episode we're introduced to Elfo. Yep. And Elfo is introduced as like this super cynical, like I fucking hate life. I want to experience pain yes, and displeasure. Because he's an elf who lives in an elf kingdom where nothing is wrong. They make candies. They live in a magic fucking Keebler yeah, world. Everybody sings and everyone's happy all the time. And Elfo just wants a little bit of that gray real life depression. But the minute he walks out of the elf world, he's an elf. I know, right. He becomes a fish out of water. Yes, and and then so, but the what's funny to me is that I, I think on your on this same point, Greg, is that the show starts and Elfo is kind of the main guy we're introduced to, and there's so much potential for comedy because he goes, he leaves his elf kingdom and he gets into the real world, the real world which is set in this medieval kingdom of the dark the dark ages when like yeah. there was no electricity and people most like 95 percent of people were dying like at in you know before they hit 30 because of diseases and like they didn't have anything at all you know starvation and all that shit so basically elfo gets exactly what he's looking for and more and it's r- the contrast of how happy he is to be in this miserable environment is is great for comedy yet 
they turned away from that within the first two or three episodes to make Elfo into a shittier fry who was just pining over Bean and, and just being stupid. Yes, exactly. Like there's from from what we're made to believe with Elfo is that Elfo is smart mm -hmm. because of how he's been able to survive in the elf world of him being able him sneaking off and like dating one of the elf characters right like the elf chief's daughter and shit exactly when all, but then all of a sudden he comes into dream world and he's fucking like colossally like, stupid colossal virgin type kind of character yeah and not and it's like not because he doesn't know the rules of the real world it's like you're introduced to him as if he's got street smarts and yet then he loses but all he, sense of but those. then he doesn't have street smart anymore. Yeah, he loses you're, all you're of made, it. You're made to believe that he's, like, for anarchy, but then he's the voice of reason character? Exactly. He's always begging Bean to, like, be reasonable. He's the, he's the angel on her shoulder versus the demon who's always whispering to do bad things, voiced by Eric Andre, Which, who feels like a shittier bender. He's just a shitty bender. Yes. He's introduced as being the personal demon for Bean. He's, mm -hmm. he's used as, all right, I'm going to be a shitty friend and make you do bad things. Right. But he never really makes her do bad things. The worst things he makes her do is drink. Pretty much. And he's always drinking with her. And they like, you know, he's in some ways, he's kind of like a decent friend. He's, like he, he's an enabler. But, yes. then, but then all of a sudden he's a decent friend. Yeah. He like puts his shoulder, you know, she cries for, on his shoulder. They bond. Demon, like Bender was way worse. No, t totally, <laughs> totally. And then on that same note, Eric Andre's demon, you know, named Lucy, feels like a shittier version of Bender. Then you've got the king, Bean's father, voiced by, by John, John DiMaggio, DiMaggio, who is Bender, and he uses, I mean, the he voice... Uses, he uses his New York guy accent, yes. which is... So fifty percent of his voices. You're ju and all all I'm hearing the whole time, and I'm sure anybody else who's seen Futurama, all you're hearing from the king is Bender. He's just not that character. You're supposed he's supposed to be like this oafish king, always grumbling, and all you hear is is Bender. And you're yeah. like you don't really you don't root for him at I all. I mean that's it's not I. I thought that the the father character was going to have a much smaller role. But he ends up honestly being like the fourth most important character in the show. Totally. Yeah. Really, like the second most important because who gives a shit about Elfo and Lucy? Oh, yeah. Tor and toward the end, and we, you know, even so, we still won't spoil anything, but there is a, a plot twist, if you will, at the end where a new character comes in or a character they've been referencing comes back and it changes the dynamic of where the show is headed or certainly even where it's going that to episode be. episode spends so much time on one of the main characters yeah and then it's completely dropped yeah exactly and that's that's one of the many reasons why this show is frustrating and but more so and more offensively so is that it's really not very funny it's there is incredibly mediocre like it's not the worst show in the world no the animation is honestly better than both futurama and the simpsons of course it is yeah the animation's solid it looks it looks pretty sweet it's um but the 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 laugh out loud moments of which there I could count on one hand you know like it was less than five but the moments I did laugh out loud were had more to do with like random voiceover choices and, and side jokes yes side jokes than any of the writing and anything that had to do with like the main characters yeah. all that dialogue and like the the real good like jokes that you come to expect from both Simpsons and Futurama it was almost well, it's, totally it's absent none of it's from the main characters it's all from Billy West and Tress McNeil yes. and all of the usual like Matt Groening suspects yeah. just improv in the background because they're professional voice actors. Yes, they do that like, exactly very Billy well. Billy West plays the jester and he has so many just good, dumb throwaway lines. Right. They're so fucking funny. They're great, yeah. Like they throw <laughs> it's so it's done so quick. Um like the king threatens to throw the jester out a, out a window and it's just Billy West improv going oh no right exactly and it's in, in you know in conjunction with this guy just truly falling to his death outside of a high tower window and he just almost in disbelief and and, like, and it's it's been done, like disbelief. it's been done before yes. like he's so used to it oh, right right no. he can barely conjure up enough energy to like you know <laughs> protest you know and and it's so it's stuff like that that is that is enjoyable but as we said there's not 
as there shouldn't be. It's the beginning of a series, so what they should be doing is building up the storyboard and, and all the plot points for all your main characters. But you look at both The Simpsons and Futurama, they both had a wider, um, or, or, or I should say they had more in their ensemble. You've got the whole family of The Simpsons and the Futurama, you've got like, what, five, six main characters. In this one, it's really just three, and then four if you do add the king onto it. Yeah. So, so in that regard, it's like the group feels very small, except for the side characters, you know, when you, but they're not, enough attention isn't paid to them to outweigh the disinterest you have in the main characters. That's what the show should be called, disinterest, because I don't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> exactly. F- I'm oh, telling by, you. Oh, by the way, uh, Mark's, Mark Mothersbaugh did the soundtrack. Oh, which really? Which I thought was really funny. What? Yeah, uh, of Devo fame. Mark Mothersbaugh was the one that did all the music. Interesting. Uh, and I kind of like the main theme, like the... <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Um, what I think... Overall, with the humor that I didn't like, is that the setting is is medieval, like, fantasy world, so it's supposed to dig into fantasy shit. But it has a lot of millennial humor. Absolutely. Which was kind of really different compared to um, The Simpsons and Futurama. Futurama was digging at... I guess both of them are digging at modern society uh, in terms of, like, all right, this is what could happen or what is happening, but I'm, like times 10 but when it's used in disenchantment like i don't find it funny and it's like the wrong setting yes because like it's a fantasy world and it's also set in like medieval times so none of them give a shit about like political political correctness yeah there's so many political correct jokes where i'm like yeah it doesn't really make sense in the setting you're trying to make fun of political correctness but this is the wrong setting to do it. Absolutely. Like, there's one joke where a character puts on a beak when they're talking to a griffin, and he's like, I hope this isn't cultural appropriation. Yeah, that's right. And I'm like, these are supposed to be digs at this, but these are so bad. Yeah, right. It's not, it it wasn't done well, and that's what we mean. Like, the writing and what they tried to do, it just, it didn't come over well. And you know what? One thing I will say, just uh, on the, you know, on the optimistic side of things, is that if you look at the first season, of any show it's not gonna be that great but this is the first half of the first season yes and the way that this season ends it it relies really hard on a cliffhanger but i don't care at this point not interested no you're not interested it's it's a huge blot of like episodic dumb bullshit but then all of a sudden now they want to go into um like they want it to be a story driven show, I guess. Right. Apparently. Cause Apparently. they, cause the way that they end it, it's just, again, they, which I mean, like I have no right to rag on because my favorite show, the venture brothers first season is bad. Well, like, that, it's not, it's not great, but it's, it's character building and world showing. Yeah. And, and that's, that was, I, that's like more along the lines of, of what I mean to say is that even when the first season of shows that turn out to be good, even when the first season is bad or certainly not as or good, weak. yeah, it's weak. It's not as good as it gets later on. Like, they are uh, playing like Bojack, like Bojack, exactly. Like a lot of like like even Frasier, you know, even live action stuff. It's like they Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah. They but they do plant seeds that the if the writers are good, they can utilize those later on and character development and all this stuff. So it can grow into something better. And maybe that will happen with Disenchantment. These are only eight episodes, and it's the front end of the thing. Maybe it'll take a turn, and maybe it'll start to find its stride a little bit. And if it does, you know, that'd be great. Because, as we all know, when a Matt Groening show is doing well, like, it's a joy to watch. But When a Matt Groening show does well, then we won't hear the end of it for a decade. Exactly. That's exactly right. Everyone's going to love it. I mean, there's a reason why people wanted a revival of Futurama two times. Yeah, right. They just, they want it because it it is good. Maybe Disenchantment will become that and and that'd be cool. But at the moment, the way it stands... It's very weak. It's very weak and it doesn't make you want to hang on to to see if that will happen. There's just too much out there to watch. As we talk about all the time, everyone's list is growing all the time. And when something's just middle of the road like this, it really just, it's hard to to keep giving to it a chance it. Yeah. absolutely yeah maybe maybe when the whole season is out then we'll see where it goes but right if it starts if it goes into back into like episodic nature then i'm just gonna be like uh, yeah done done care. with it done with it yeah. 
But uh, yeah, so that's how we feel about disenchantment. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, enter that uh, portal at your own peril. I guess. Yeah. You know? But uh, in any case, uh, we did watch another thing too. That we did. Yeah. So I was able to pirate a movie and get it onto my hand here. That he did, which was really yeah. cool. So uh, you didn't have to wear the eye patch, but you know, I, I get why you did. Well, I wanted to be the real Captain Greggins. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> all right, exactly, know, be exactly. A pirate. Uh huh. But in any case, uh, we got our hands on Black Klansman, Black the new Spike Lee film. Black Klansman, indeed, a Spike Lee joint out yes. twenty eighteen. Uh, yeah, which um, also, you know, it's it's a. Uh, What's funny is it it is as as unbelievable as it seems. This it's based on a true story of a rookie black cop in Colorado who, in the I guess late sixties or seventies, in the seventies, yeah. infiltrated that local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan, and he did so over the phone. And then through a surrogate officer, a white officer. Uh, he was able to continue the infiltration all the way up to the top ranks of of the Klan, which in the movie they call the organization and such. But uh, and he, oh my God, the casting in this movie is fantastic. It's great. It, it, it's really great. You uh, were telling me when we were about to watch it that you are not a fan of Adam Driver, and I just want to say, what is wrong? I'm with not, you? and I know he's your man crush, and I'm. Re- I mean, I shouldn't say that he's I, like a beautiful bird boy. It's not. I, I just want to peck him on his cheek. <laughs> I'm sure he'd. I'm sure he'd be thrilled to hear he that. He would probably. He would be like, "Oh, this sounds pretty cool." Oh, wow. Why don't you try it then? Wow. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. I. I have to tell you. After Black Klansman, I like Adam Driver more than I have. To be fair, my only exposure to him was in the HBO show Girls, and then Star Wars. Kylo Ren. He's done so much more. Of, that's so great. Of, He's of in course, Lu- in Lucky Logan. A- exactly. He's so good in a- that. Exactly. But I haven't seen those movies. This was the only other thing I've seen him in besides that stuff, and he did well. Uh, Adam Driver does well as the surrogate Jewish white officer that has to go in person to play uh, Ron Stallworth to the Klan, who the black guy, that's his real name. Ron Stallworth (laughs) is is, the guy's name. Yeah, it's so, uh, it's it's based on a true story, as we've said. Um, Very, very, very good movie. Uh, I would say this is probably, like, has become the most popular Spike Lee movie to, to date. right now it's, it's a, probably it's the a, high it, i think it's his highest rated movie on rotten tomatoes now it's a big return they're calling it a big return to form for him because yeah. the movies spike lee is most well known for are i would say um uh, from front to back it's uh what's malcolm x certainly but there was one before that it's like um i think i know the one you're talking about i just can't it's, think it's of the with, name um samuel jackson as like the radio host yeah and it's got john Turturro. yes and, yes exactly um, do the right thing do the right thing that's what it's yeah. called so he's the one where it, it, he spends like five minutes going back and forth between every main character in the movie saying every racial <laughs> slur possible yep that's the one so do the right thing Malcolm X with Denzel, and then Inside Man, also with Denzel from, I, I can't remember which year that was, but it was, with, and Clive Owen with the Wait, bank robbery. Inside Man, that's not the bank robbery movie. It is. Ugh, that's, I remember that one. I actually enjoy Inside Man. Quite, n- not uh, not like, it's not a great it doesn't, movie. But it doesn't feel like it's a, it's a Spike Lee movie. It, it doesn't. This feels, feels like, like a Spike, Spike Lee, Lee movie. movie. 100%. There's, there is a moment in this movie where he actively shows exploitation movie posters. Oh yeah, just have them slide onto screen as they just discuss about black exploitation, mm-hmm. which works in the movie's favor because it's it's honestly about a real life black exploitation. Well, yeah, it's something that seems so it seems so out of this world that was able to be done right that it couldn't be real but it's a real fucking story it's a book it's it's a real story it's a book and the thing is and and you know that that's unbelievable about the whole story is that you look back at it and and you're laughing throughout the movie because of how ridiculous it is there are so many scenes Topher Grace is in the movie by the way he's cast Topher as David Duke Grace, please, he's David wonderful Duke. he's wonderful that, in it. it's that so, it's surprised so surprised the shit of it me like, too the two of us are just sitting there and then as soon as he shows up, we immediately just look at each other like... Started cracking over? up. Like, what? That 70s show? What are we doing here? But anyway... Uh, the 
Eddie Brock. Right, yeah, right, right, exactly. Here the with his sharp venom. teeth and all. Wow. So, and he's saying all these racial slurs. Exactly. And so so uh, Topher Grace is on the phone as David Duke a lot. And he's having these conversations with Ron Stallworth, the real black rookie officer. and uh, Played by John David Washington, by the way. And thank he, you. He fucking... He's great. It. He's wonderful He's as so the lead. He's so fucking cool. He really is very good. He's very cool. His hair is wonderful in the movie. He's another, I want his hair. Another thing Can we fuck ice cream cone and just pop it on your head? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, that's what I, th- I think that could work, actually. But anyway, he, he does really he, he does wonderfully. And I wanted to say another thing about this movie that I thought was cool was the timepiece elements of it. The fashion, the cars, the music, Everyone the radio. Everyone is just in red flannel. Y- yeah. And- it was just, it was, it was well done in that regard. Like, I really liked that. Um, but a- anyway, you're laughing in the movie because of these ridiculous things, like when Ron Stallworth's Just on the phone with David stupid Duke. These rednecks are. Yeah, and David Duke says something like, "I can always tell when I'm talking to one of them." And Ron Stallworth, in his like wh- white or voice, is like, "Well, how can you tell? How can you tell?" Yeah, and David Duke lists all these ways, and you're laughing because it's like, obviously, dude, you are talking to a black guy on the phone. You just don't know. But that. it's also cutting back and forth between Ron Stallworth on the phone and the rest of the police force cracking, who are up. laughing around him the whole time and and it's just so there's this ridiculousness to it but then at the end of the movie you are reminded with real news footage from current events unfortunately that's a you know it's it's an it's a disturbing and kind of you know it's a biting social commentary because it's a reminder of what's really going on right now and as much as you laugh uh, and as much as you laugh at the movie that's kind of the point of it is that you laugh at it and you realize that on some level this stuff is still going on. This clan is not dead. Like, they're very yeah, much they're, around they're right not dead. now. David Duke is still jerking and, off and, in front of people. And last year, as is shown at the end of the movie, it's not a spoiler, but it's news footage of Charlottesville, the rally last year where white supremacists clashed with protesters and somebody ended up dying from it. And it's... It's, and the movie is honestly in memorial of her. It, it is. And it's, pol- it's, it's obviously politicized, and, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it does take you you know out from the movie back into the real world but that's a, that's why it's a spike lee movie it's commentary that way and he makes his point and he he takes he really you on that drives it into you and he takes you on that journey and he he hits the funny parts and you you're on you're along the movie ride with him which is good and then at the very end you're slapped in the face with the reality that oh hey like that was enjoyable well, there's but al- there's, there's real also, injustice there's also two other moments in the movie where it feels like it's not uh, the movie itself, but just real commentary from real people. Uh, very early on in the movie, like uh, Ron infiltrates like this like Black Power um, seminar. Yes, and the way it's shot and the way that it moves around, it doesn't feel like it belongs in the movie because right. it's so different compared to everything else seen in it. Absolutely, there's silhouettes of every. Uh, actor in the room just the look on their face of like being inspired and the way that he showed that that was another thing i wanted to bring up greg was that that stylistic choice of spike lee's to be the background like the camera is just like a single tight shot the background is just it's just black it's darkness and then one light like underneath like this person in the audience's face like a black actor or like you know someone in the audience and the inspiration that is shown like just but the way that you as the audience member are seeing that like you're it really is inspiring and you are taken into that moment as if you're listening to this guy on stage speak of these injustices that you really feel inside of you it's like it is not it doesn't feel like it's a part of the rest of the movie yeah it feels like kind of a a little slice of something different and that part was very cool that was one of my favorite parts of the movie yeah there's another moment too where um they speak with an old um i guess he was he was a survivor from a from a clansman attack um, and he goes on to talk about like instances of black people being murdered by the KKK. Right. And they do full shots of photographs of these dead people. Right. Like the crime scene photos. And, say, and right. then the movie actively makes a point to stop, stop saying things. So you actually look at the photos. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's very much a Spike Lee movie and it's a very, very good movie. Yeah. Very worth uh, watching. Yeah. It's, it's the kind of Ron thing is, Ron is an incredibly likable character. Oh yeah. Same with Adam Driver's character. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I I love all the Klansmen. They're so I know. Doofy. over the top and doofy. doofy. Yep, it's uh, it's you can't help but it's like they're you, they're stupid and you hate their racism, but you you know that they're just like you, bumpkins. You left the room uh, to use the bathroom. Yes, and quite possibly the greatest line in all of the film Dang happened. It. Dang it! Um, Adam Driver is strapped to. A lie detector test. Right. Just to see. He's like, are you a Jew or not? Uh-huh. Uh, and he's like, you know, then Jews got the, the thing with their penises. He's like, what What are the thing with the penises? You know, them circumstances. <laughs> Damn it. That is good. You missed. I wish I'd seen that. You know, them circumstances. You, knew, you know, them circumstances. Right, right. Uh, they are so doofy and over the top that, like... I love them getting shit on. They are villains that you love to see get hurt. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, especially Topher Grace's David Duke. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Um, I also like Robert John Burke. He played the police chief, Chief yeah. Bridges or whatever. That guy's kind of been around different stuff. I recognize him from Rescue Me. He's been all over TV. But I really like that guy, too. He's just kind of got this way about him that's that's likable, even when he's being a dick. Uh, um, Alec I, Baldwin was in it for a little yeah, bit, which I totally he, forgot he about. Was yeah, it was a, such a small bit. Very, very tiny cameo in there. Like, but, almost, uh, like, you forget about it until you go through, like, the, the cast. Where you're right. Like, uh, Alec Ball? Uh, okay. Right. And then uh, this other, who played uh, Ron Stallworth's love interest, Laura Harrier, who, yes. is, uh, who was most recently in Spider-Man Homecoming uh, alongside uh, Tom Holland. Yeah. Yeah. But she did very well uh, She did also. great. Yeah. She had amazing hair in that movie, too. Also, yeah. I just, the, the, the fashion, the cars, the music, the... It, it, it was very believable but yeah. that this was set in the 70s. Yeah, exactly. And so it was just the attention to detail, again, even on that front, also uh, well done on Spike Lee's part there. So just Black Klansman, it is worth it. It's um, you know, it's not the kind of movie you're probably going to see twice in the theater, but um, it, it's, it's worth watching. It's biting social commentary. Yeah. It's something that's super relevant right now. Yeah, it's worth going to see, definitely. Yes. And uh, the journey that you go on is you, you'll like it. You'll, you'll, you'll like it after having gone through it. Yeah, Trust don't, just don't tell Spike Lee that you know we we pirated it. Yeah, I don't. I'll, think I'll be sneak too some. Happy. I'll sneak some movie like movie money into the Davis when you know I'm when not we're good, when we're when to the we're, table when we're good and ready. Yeah, okay. we'll drop we'll drop some money off, and I'll give a kiss to that painted mural in their bar thing. You know, the one with like the the fucking Cookie Monster yeah. and Sully. Yeah, all, all going that to the theater. Right, right. Yeah, I exactly. Hate that mural. I know. I look at it. I want what I want them to have is those like shot glasses made of just ice that once you take the shot, you just throw it and smash it on something. I want to. <laughs> I want to do that on the mural. I want. I want. I want to do order. it to Bugs Bunny specifically. Yeah. Like, yeah. What's up, Dick? <laughs> I'll show you what's up. You I'll fucking show you rodent. You fucking loser. Yeah. Uh, no one but anyway, likes bugs. Everyone likes Daffy. No, that's, that's Donald. Donald. I know it is. <laughs> what the heck is happening here? Now that's that's Sylvester. But it's also Daffy. Daffy has to be much higher pitched. That's right. That's right. But I can't do higher pitch because I've got a low. I got a tenor voice, baby. Yeah, you do. I can always do the Sylvester. Yeah, you can. How about you come into my mouth, there, bird? <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. <laughs> there you go. You fucking putty. <laughs> well, you fucking putty. Get over here. Do you think? Do you think that Tweety Bird has ever called anyone a pussy? But he was like, "You fucking putty." <laughs> Probably all the time, and everyone just laughs at him because he's a cute little bird, and they don't realize Take what he's shot, saying. You little putty. The Most Tasmanian, the Tasmanian devil is just like. <laughs> 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 He was you think, act, speaking you think, of biting social commentary, do you, do you think that's a devil. <laughs> <laughs> he was always very sensitive to that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know what? He was a social justice devil. Totally. An SJD. <laughs> and a vacuum cleaner. Always yeah. getting up spare food. <laughs> Women's rights. <laughs> See if you call her that after three months behind bars. <laughs> Big tech. <laughs> Yeah, 
Uh, anyway, but uh, so yeah, Black Klansman was yeah, good. Yeah, but yeah, Tweety Bird is a is an insane racist and also a member of the KKK. Black yeah. Klansman is a great movie. Yeah, so go and check it out. It is worth it. Yeah, so I guess those are our two recommendations. Well, one not recommendation. Right. No maybe, to Disenchantment. Yeah. Maybe later if it gets better. And then uh, definitely check out Black Klansman. But now we are on to the portion of the show Greg and I like to do toward the end. Greg's List. Where we, uh, where you can send any thoughts, questions, concerns, uh, suggestions, whatever. Greg and I pull messages from there and we like to answer a question or address a concern that you've gotten on the show. And this week we have one from... Uh, right now, we've got one from DJ. DJ. Yeah, DJ. DJ. DJ, DJ, DJ. He's got a, he's got a real, real interesting uh, email here. So yeah? Okay. DJ says, I've rented, pissing, and pooing, and peeing and shitting my pants for a long time. Why should I change? Jordan sent for my iPhone. <laughs> Okay. Well, Jordan, wait a, wait a second. Let's let's read that again, please, okay. and slow it down. Okay, I've rented, pissing, and pooing, and peeing, and shitting my pants for a long time. Why should I change? So, are those multiple movie titles? When he says, "I've rented, pissing, and pooing, and." No, what I think he's doing, I think he's talking about his pants. So he's rented his pants. Oh, he's pissed in his pants. From like Plato's he's closet? In his pants. Oh, God. He's peed in his pants. So this is, and he's shit in his pants. This is a conf- For a long time. This is, why and should he, he change? And he wants to know why he should change. So this is a confessional. This is someone who's been renting. DJ, rent- you have come to the right Boys. Thank you, DJ, for sending this in. So you're the kind of guy that's been renting clothes from something like a Plato's Closet or whatever. That's probably an incorrect business uh, uh, citing that I'm doing, but whatever one of those companies are where you rent the clothes and you are expected to return them not soiled, and you, DJ, have instead been pissing and pooing and peeing and shitting. So he's being redundant, though, there, right? Because Well, there's a big difference between a piss and a pee. A piss is when you're when you're red in the face and you're getting real hard. Pee is just like, gotta go. Dri- dribbling it out at pooing. night. Yeah. Pooing is like, you gotta go. Shitting is when you're like, <gasps> I, ate so- I ate something spicy. And it hurts. Yeah, where it's like, it really starts to, you know, potentially it, it blow some It brings the brave heart out. out in you. Absolutely. Freedom! <laughs> Get out! Yeah. No, that's that's a great movie by Jordan Peele. <laughs> so it is. The Sunken Place. It is also is another movie shits. with with serious serious social Biting commentary. Fighting social commentary. Yeah. It's uh yeah 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 good 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 one also. But in to any check case out. DJ, I got to say, stop renting clothes and doing that. Why should you know what? No. I don't think he should change. Greg, don't encourage this. DJ, I think you are comfortable the way you are. Piss and shit filled pants as are. And you know what? I think you should continue doing so. Because that's what makes you unique. Look at me. I've got sharp teeth and a robot hand. That's what makes me unique. This isn't the same thing. Don. You... Don's got this Iron Man flashlight thing in his chest. Listen, nobody's going... That's what makes him unique. No. Nope. You are our pissing and shitting friend, DJ. And you should not run away from that. Greg. No one is expected to use your teeth or my flashlight after we're done with them. People are expecting to use these clothes once he's finished with well, them. Well, if and he he's returns ruining them. them. He's ruining them. If he returns them, I don't even think they take them back. They would be smart not to after DJ has been finished Listen, with them. Listen, DJ, skip the renting part. Stop renting your pants. Buy them. And just ruin your pants. Do your own pants, though. Buy some pants and, and then shit sell and pee those ruined pants on Etsy. If there, if it's an artistic display, hey, you listen, could do listen, that. hit us back up with uh, with your email here, and uh, you know maybe we can work something out. Maybe if we do a joint like boxcar buddies pants, we could sell them. Oh, we don't we don't want to be associated with this, Greg. Come on, DJ, give us want, another call. You want all these fucking shitty pairs of pants from this DJ guy lining our? You want to store these? I mean, I haven't seen them yet. Ew, we can't man. tell how pissed and shitted in they are in. I feel like I can smell them already. Like I don't, I don't want you any can taste part them of this. in the air. They're wafting. I'm, uh, I'm already. I'm well, already in any case, there. thanks, thanks for uh, for joining <sighs> in here, DJ. Remember, you can always join the show at Boxcar Buddies. Uh, by going to Greg's List, G-G-G-R-E-G-L-I-S-T. Well, G-G-G-R-E-G-S-L-I-S-T at gmail.com. 
Sorry. In any <clears> case, <throat> we got one. We got one more. Okay, we got one more. Email. No more. It better not be anything about poop, though. I can't. No, I can't this one's about, about a jomb. A jomb. How to make jomb? Jomba. Like jamba juice? No, no. How's, like it, a, how's it spelled? Uh, J O N B. Jomb. I think he meant job. Probably. But in any case, let's read this. Hola, my name is Fabio. Fab- I am immigrants from Peru. Hey, Fabio. Hi, Fabio. Welcome to the show. You are first American radio show I am try, and it is goodness. <gasps> Thanks, Thanks, Fabio. Hey, we're po- this, this is a podcast, uh, not on the radio, but thank eh, you so much. Same thing. Thank you so much. Same thing. Please tell me how to get job. My family needs more foods. Hmm. Can we stay with you in Metal Home for a couple years? Oh, oh, Fabio. Oh, he wants to join. Well, that's the problem. Fabio. We're never, we're never linked to one box. Card. No, we and en- we usually end up destroying these. I guess speaking this out loud now to you, Fabio, and to you, Greg. I'm realizing that we're really no better than DJ, are we? We use these box cars. We rent these box we cars. Rent we them. Piss and we do. Shit and we poo do and our pee own in away with them, and then we discard them. Yeah, and we never return them. Mister hypocrite, DJ, I owe you an apology. I uh, I didn't realize how similar our circumstances were, and I have no ground to stand on for telling you not to, to poop in the clothes that you. Well, rented. we have no ground right now because we're we're lifted in my bed. We are. Yeah, this is nice. Actually, this is. Stop shaking! I can't uh, move. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry, um, Fabio. Um, yeah, the, you can't you can't really stay with us yeah. because like we we bounce from boxcar to boxcar. But hey, Weekly. maybe we'll run. You know what? Why don't you grab a boxcar? Email us where you're hanging out, yes. and then we can just hang out. We'll come over to you if you find one. You know, have your. Let's just say Greg and I have found some abandoned boxcars. Go find your own. Yeah. There are plenty around the city of Chicago. Grab one for your family. Tell us where you're posted up, and we'll come visit you guys. But yeah. uh, on the job front on the job front yeah we um, uh we're kind of in the same boat there bud we yeah uh, we don't have a job we, we don't, don't recommend like them we don't recommend them to people yeah, that's jobs what, are jobs are boring no we recommend wow content. i'm gonna do the same thing over and over again for green paper when i can just steal it oh i need to clean myself and feed my kids and, well, and actually have i have no right to do, do that because i do odd jobs <gasps> my god don what i have jobs what do you mean i work you do have some jobs I don't really, I mean... There work. Yeah, there's work involved. I guess it is technically a job. You're doing I mean, something for somebody I, else. I they pay dance, you to do it. Yeah. I, I usher. You provide a service for which someone pays you. Yeah, so, I don't know, just go online and type in to Google, like, uh, give me job. Yeah. You can, I can guarantee you, you'll find something easy. I mean, I use Craigslist. Task, Not to be confused with Craigslist. TaskRabbit is another great source for yourself. Go do, go, go, pick up groceries for someone. Go walk somebody's dog. Like you can find Uber. all that stuff there. There you go. Get yourself. As long as you're not a, some kind of weird, creepy sex pervert, then that's fine. You can be an, an Uber driver. You can be an Uber driver, I guess. Yeah. It well, even though the majority of Uber drivers are probably like creepy sex perverts. So at least maybe reformed, supposedly, but probably not really Colum- reformed. Column B. Yeah. Definitely uh, a history there, a criminal yeah. history. Well, uh, also here, uh, also, what is your favorite movie of ever? Oh, <laughs> Fabio. Fabio, Fabio, what, a, what, an unex- what an unexpected question at the end there. Thank hey, you. Hey, you know what? He needs movie recommendations. Yeah. How about, how about you give your favorite movie, Don? Favorite movie ever. Favorite movie ever. That is a... Wow, that's weighty. Um, Fine, then I'll go because it's real easy for me. Really? Go ahead. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Wow, that's your favorite ever? That's my favorite movie. That movie is terrifying. When Christopher Lloyd melts into the nothingness at the yes. end? That is really scary. That, mo- that movie is phenomenal. It's uh, really good. It, Bob Hoskins. It is. It is not only a story that is worth following because it's it's film noir and golden age cartoons yes. combined into one thing. Yes, there are two things I love. I love film noir. Uh-huh. I love old film noir, and I love golden age cartoons. Smash them together. Well, skip the racist ones. Well, but, yeah. yeah, but you get like Bugs Bunny and Woody Woodpecker, some of that real good and stuff. And you just mash them together in this world mm-hmm. that is also biting social commentary about racism in, Whoa, in early California. Love it. Gotta love it. There's a lot of subtext in the movie, but it's also really funny. It's got likable characters. It's got a good soundtrack. And it, like, come on. The moving light? Oh, yeah. If uh, For those who don't know, there's a scene in Roger Rabbit where uh, Bob Hoskins is in uh, a room where they accidentally knocked a light, and the light kept swinging back and forth. 
and the animators, without commenting to the director or anybody else about the scene, used that scene and properly animated Roger to have the lighting fling back and forth on him. Right. Adding so much more layers because all the animated characters in the movie are fucking hand-drawn traditional like yes. frame by frame animation the old school stuff to make it feel it's it's a technically beautiful it's it's a technical fucking marvel yeah. that no other like live action cartoon movie has ever been able to replicate yeah no and na- and they don't they won't anymore because now the method is like completely different they it's just use 3D. the cgi yeah exactly it's they use much, computers it's for much everything. easier to animate because of flash absolutely yeah so it's not it won't be the same but i i also i that's that's an interesting favorite choice. I do like that movie. I haven't seen it for like years, but that's my uh, favorite movie. That's a good one. I it's it, just it has so many good one liners. You know, fucking when when Jessica Rabbit's in his apartment and his girlfriend comes by, and he's like, "You dabbling in watercolors, Eddie?" <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would have to say if I my favorite, I just right now I'm gonna go ahead and my my normal answer to that question is Dumb and Dumber. Actually, I could watch Dumb and Dumber. With Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, I could watch that movie any day of the week because I have probably seen that movie like uh, 500 plus times and I literally still find things to laugh about. I will watch that. That's the go-to Jim Carrey movie. Not the Grinch. Not the Grinch. Not Not even Ace Ventura. I like the Grinch and Ace Ventura very much, but Dumb and Dumber, I, I like the mask very much too. But Dumb and Dumber is, uh, it has a special place. It's, it's just, that, it's that special place of 90s, just pure slapstick. Yep. And, and the Fairley brothers were sort of at the top of their game there. So the, the writing is so layered and the acting is well done on their part. It's really just, it's, that was kind of at, it was a wonderful mix. Like the amalgamation of the different parts in that movie really met up to kind of be one of those magical things that you can't recreate because they tried. They tried in different they tried ways. Two do- they tried two times and they're both terrible. And failed. Remember failed that miserably. prequel? Oh yeah. With, with Bob Saget in yep. a bathroom just screaming, screaming shit. shit for like two minutes, which you could tell was the whole reason for like that. That's the only reason that anyone wants Bob Saget on anything. Pretty much, they were just like, to scream oh. obscenities. They were like, be the opposite of Danny Tanner. Like, just go and scream the s. Go scream a swear word uh, at at for like it's twenty times. Shit. There's shit. There's shit. The There's shit and everywhere. Shit everywhere. Yeah, as, as that was, and then but, his girlfriend came in and he was like, "Oh, look at that shit!" And then right. they slit her throat. Yeah, and then he went into the aristocrat joke. He just went into it, and he they just, were like, "Gross!" Full, full half hour of the aristocrat joke, and nobody even asked him to do it, and no one wanted him to do it. No, no, he he always funny. he always does it, and they're like, "Dude, what goes on in your head is twisted. Nobody's filming anything. Just get out of my house." And he's like. <laughs> He just brings it to a dude's house and goes, all right, Starts let me tell you about this girl joke. who took off her pussy lips and then he wrapped and suffocated this <laughs> this small boy. And then the father came in and he smashed a head in. Now I'm turning it to Gilbert Gottfried. Uh-huh. Yeah, who, who also, also does, does the aristocrat, aristocrat joke. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, the, it's one of those Though, things. I will say uh, I won't fault Gilbert Gottfried because I met him before and he's such a friendly man is that right he's a he's a sweetheart is he from is he also from philly or from the east coast do you no, know no i met him here in chicago interesting i just ran into him one day i like i was in the subway and there he was and i was like go for godfrey and he was like you found me <laughs> iago get on my shoulder you little shit i was like no we have to we have to quote your most well-known movie uh agent chimp Oh, what in the world? It's a straight-to-DVD movie <laughs> of those monkey movies. Oh, and no. And Gilbert Godfrey plays an evil scientist. Oh, boy. I gotta find the monkeys! And I gotta make sure that I transform all of Earth into monkeys. Okay, Gilbert. Let's take that. Let's try that again. I'm gonna find every monkey in this city. Great job. And I'm gonna take these monkeys and I'm gonna smash them. I think we got it. Combine them into one giant monkey. Uh, and then his aristocrat joke just kept going let's on. Let's take on 15, everybody. Gilbert's uh, in one of his things again. Yeah, well, uh, thank you, Fabio, for the for the question. Thank you, Fabio. Thank Our you, DJ. Our two favorite movies, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dumb and Dumber and uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. Yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like both of those are fun. And thank you both for the question. Again, uh, gregslist at gmail.com. You can... Uh, Hit that up at any time with questions Slide and stuff into like our that. DMs. Please do. Be gentle, though. Our DM box is, uh, 
Well, it's starting to get. It's overloaded. been hurt before, you yeah. know. Let's let's just leave it at that. Its heart's been broken easily. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, we uh, I've been hearing freak kind of uh, stomp around near the door there, and I don't think that chair is going to hold for very long. Are you about to go to bed? Uh, uh, yeah, sure, freak. I'm ready for bed. Okay, I'll be in there in five minutes to tuck you in. What? Oh shit! You better run. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. He yeah. tucks you in. Yeah. What are you ta- What are you talking about? You he tucks he you in. Me, he kisses me bedtime stories before I go to bed. This is not a friendship, man. I don't know what this is. What's he going on here? He tells me bedtime stories. What's wrong with that? What kind of see? Bedtime, this is this kind of is the relationship stories? I have. I protect his place of work, and he reads me bedtime stories. And, so like and a, also gives me milk. Like a like a dog or a cat. This is a pet relationship that you're talking about No, here. Uh, what person reads stories to their pets? It's more like a father-son relationship. Lonely, Let's people, be real. lonely people read to their pets. I'm sure they do. Greg, I'm warming up the milk. See, case, <laughs> case in point. Case in point there. Warming up milk and, and getting ready for a bedtime story. So I do have to get out of here. I hope that Don left. <clears throat> if he isn't there, I'm afraid that I may... Turn into a rage. Okay, I, uh, I'm i really going to get out of here, but again... But uh, if I saw him, okay. I would probably just pick him up by his small frame and just fling him against the walls angrily. Jesus. Like a fish out of water, but, you know, I have it by the tail and I'm beating him. Why does he always bring up the fish thing? I don't get that with him. He's always about fishing. You know, my father used to take me fishing. Okay, he's explaining it now. Okay, I have to get out of here. Uh, Greg, uh, thanks a lot, buddy. We are not recommending Wait, before this before you go, please, just give me a scratch, please. No, I'm not gonna do that. I already gave the, you the whip. The, I gave it, you the whip. It doesn't work. Ow, ow, it doesn't ow, work. Okay, See, it okay, hurts. Okay, okay, it does hurt. Here, take this rod. Take the scratcher. There, there you go. There you go. Oh. That's better, right? Okay, he's got the rod. Uh, wait on disenchantment. You better not be pleasuring yourself in there. <laughs> he knows about what you do in here. I hear you moaning. <laughs> you won't hear the rest of the bedtime story. What will happen to those three little pigs? This is so twisted. You better go because I need to find out. Like I, he's been, he, I get it. I he's get been it, I breaking this story up into pieces, and I can't stay awake long enough. That story to hear the whole thing. That story is like fifteen pages long. How long is it possibly? He taking probably here? goes through like a page a night. Like oh, oh my, gosh. hurry the fuck up. Okay, like, uh, not recommending disenchantment. We are recommending Black Klansmen. Check those out. Thank you again for your submissions, and we'll talk next week. See you guys later. All right, Greg, I'm... Donald! Oh, I gotta get out of here! Shut Don, up, Don, get back here. I told you not to come during visiting hours. No, Greg, I gotta get in this window. I gotta get in this window here. Use the... Use the, the water fountain. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I'm stepping on it. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'm out. I'll Don, see you later. get back here. I'll see you. No, get off my leg. Get off. Get off my leg. Okay. All right, see you, Greg. Well, now that that's over, I guess it's time to read about the second little piggy. <laughs> Yay! What you just heard was a fantasy. A fiction cooked up for your amusement and the catharsis of their hosts.